What's up, my friend? Welcome to the Finding Direction podcast. My name is Stu Massengill, and I'm here every single week to bring you a passionate guest or message dedicated to helping you find your purpose so that you can live a life full of passion, fulfillment, and happiness. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for hanging out with me, and let's dive in. What's up, my friend? Welcome back to Finding Direction. I am as excited as I always am to have a conversation with you and help you find your purpose and maximize living in that purpose every single day. Before we dive into today's episode, which is, man, one that I'm so excited about, we're going to talk about how to become a super communicator and create deep connection with anyone you desire. This is something that has massively changed my life. This is something that when you implement the things we're gonna talk about today, I promise you will massively shift the quality of your life and the opportunities that you have in your life as well. So before we dive in, I wanna say thank you As always, for being here on this show, I know as we kick off 2023 and we're just a few weeks into this year, to take a few moments of your life to spend with me is not a light ask. So I really do want to say thank you for taking a sliver of the start of your new year to hang out with me to improve the quality of your life. And I promise you, we are absolutely going to deliver on today's episode. If you have not yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can join us every single week as we help you get clear on your purpose and maximize living in it. And if you have the ability, I would be extremely grateful if you would go leave a review for us on iTunes so we can know how to make this show better for you every single week. And matter of fact, if you tune into our first episode, you'll know that we're doing something. It's called the 200 by 30 challenge this year. And what it is, is our push is to get to 200 reviews by the time that I turn 30. It's February 12th and do that together so we can get this show in front of more people. And I figured the best way to celebrate my 30th birthday is by showing my appreciation for you joining us on this show. And the best way that we can do that is reading some of your reviews out loud and a way to acknowledge you, appreciate you, and say thank you for taking the time to just write a little bit of your two cents on how you're enjoying this show. So this week's review that we're gonna read out loud is by your agent RT. And the review is this. It says, latest episode, mind blown. Just listening to the most recent episode, dot, dot, dot. So good. Wow, truly need to re-listen like you mentioned and take some notes. You are a great interview. I love the topics and the exposure to great guests. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much for your agent RT for leaving that review. Um, I know we've also interacted a few times on social media. So thank you for being a regular listener to the show. I massively, massively appreciate you. And all of you listening, thank you for being here with us. Now, without that, we are going to officially dive into this week's episode, which again is about how to become a super communicator and create deep connection with anybody that you desire. And As we go into this episode, one of the things that I want to preface this episode with is the person that is sharing today's episode with you, aka me, that this message is coming from someone, and I know you probably know this if you join us on the show regularly, but it's coming from someone who used to be a shy, a quiet kid, someone that was not in the slightest good at communicating, but someone that was not tied to the identity of being a shy person, was not tied to the identity of not being a good communicator, that was not tied to the identity of, you know what, I can just never do those things. It is coming today's episode from someone who said, I'm not good at these things, so I need to really study them. I need to learn them. I need to obsess over them so that I can learn these things to shape my life. And so what I want to share with you today are some of the things I've learned over the last decade about how do you become extremely good at communication and more importantly, how do you create a deep, deep, deep connection with others? Because when you're connected with people, one, it creates more fulfillment, more enriching moments in your life. And two, it also opens more doors of opportunity, all right? So there's gonna be five things we're gonna dive into today. And the first three are gonna be about becoming a super communicator. And then the last two are gonna be How do you create a deep connection with anyone that you desire? And so the first one, when it comes to becoming a super communicator, and this may sound simple, but it's powerful, 
is make eye contact when you communicate with someone and smile. Make eye contact and smile. So when you get into an interaction with someone, it could be uh, for a business opportunity. It could be for an interview for a career. It could be, heck, for that cute guy, that cute girl you want to start dating. But when you interact with someone and you start to communicate, you want to smile and you want to make eye contact because one, a majority of the world don't make eye contact. You'll go have a conversation with someone and they're looking left, they're looking right. And what it says to the other person is it says that you don't really want to be here. And what it also shares is a lack of confidence, right? It says this person's thinking about something else. They don't really want to be here. So instantly the person you're communicating with disengages a little bit. But if you make eye contact, when you start to communicate with someone, they're going to go, oh, this person's really here. They're really present with me. They're really in this moment. And there's also a confidence that comes out when you make eye contact. So they're going to feel that as well. And the second part of this is smile. Right? Sometimes people say, yeah, I'm really happy, but you could ask them and you could say to them that they should probably tell their face that. And what I mean by that is some people are like, man, I'm so happy. I'm so, I'm in a good mood, but they're like smirking. They have this like not happy look on their face. So you, you have a conversation with them and you're like, man, this person doesn't really even want to be here. They're not smiling, let alone you may want to be there and you're not smiling, but that's what it conveys to the other person. So when you get into a conversation with someone, Make sure that number one, you are making eye contact with them. And then number two, make sure that you are smiling with them. Also, this will bring off a sense of confidence. It'll let them know that you want to be in this conversation. And instantly what it's going to do is it's going to give you a bang right off the bat as you get into communication with somebody. All right. So the next time you go have a conversation with someone, two things I want you to do right off the bat, make eye contact with them. Do it. Make good eye contact. And number two, just smile at them. All right, you do those two things and that's all you take from this episode, you're going to start to be a better communicator. So that's the number one thing. Now, the second thing you want to do to become a super communicator and create deep connection with anybody is you want to remember people's names. Okay, I, I, I'll say this now. I'll probably say it a few more times in this episode, but people's favorite thing in the world is themselves and their favorite word in the world is guess what? You bet it, it is their name. So when you get into a conversation with someone, you want to practice remembering people's names. I'm sure I am not the only person who's gotten to a conversation. I'm sure maybe you've had this happen once or twice where you meet someone, they give you their name, you're having a conversation and literally three seconds later, you go, crap, what, what was that person's name? And you forget it, right? And because so many people do this, when you actually remember somebody's name, people are people are like, "Wow, like you 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 rem you remember my name? Nobody remembers names." So when you remember someone's name and you use it, it will give you a massive advantage as you are in conversation. So a few ways that you can do this, if you're committed to remembering someone's name but you're not sure how to do it, is I'll give you three simple ways. One, ask the person to spell their name, right, or spell their name back to them. Right, so someone says, oh, my name is Chris. Right, you could say, oh, how do you spell that? Now, some people may spell it K-R-I-S. Some people may spell it C-H-R-I-S, right? Some people may spell it some other crazy way, right? Who knows? But when you ask them to spell it, what it does is it allows you to capture a little bit more of a visual picture of what the name actually looks like, right? You can also, in this sense, you could write it down, right? You could say, what's your name? They say, Chris, you go, oh, how do you spell that? And you could actually like write it down and do that if you if you have some way to write things down, if you're at like a conference or something. Now, the next way you can remember somebody's name is after the conversation, write it in your phone. And what this will train you to do is because you know you're gonna go write that in your phone after the conversation, you're gonna be a little bit more aware about remembering that you need to remember their name so you can write it in your notes in your phone. That's the second way. And then the third way is associating somebody's name to someone else that you know with that same name. So if someone comes up and they go, oh, my name is Mark and I'm meeting them all, all in my brain go, oh, I go to the gym with my buddy Mark. So, okay, let me remember and I'll associate that person with my buddy Mark that I go to the gym with and it's gonna be easier to remember their name because I have a, a frame of reference to go to. So when you meet somebody, ask them what their name is and start to ask yourself, who do I know that has this name as well? If you don't know anybody, you can ask them how they spell it. You can ask them, um, you can write it down in your notes after, right? But those are three real simple things you can do to remember their name. 
And what you want to ultimately understand is that when it comes to remember somebody's name and getting better at it, it's ultimately like building any muscle in your life, right? The first time you go into a conversation, you say, I'm going to remember somebody's names. You'll probably get five seconds in and go, crap, I forgot their name. I messed this up. But that doesn't mean you should stop, right? Go into the next conversation and say, I'm going to remember this person's name. I'm going to do it. And then maybe you remember their name. And maybe the next conversation, you don't remember the name. And the next one, you remember. And the one after that, you remember it, right? Understand that as you go to this process of remembering names, it's like building a muscle, right? I've been practicing this skill so long that I'll get into a conversation with someone. I won't cognitively remember their name, but because I've practiced this so much, my subconscious will hold on to the name and I'll remember their name. I, like I, I won't even remember hearing it, but I'll go, I know that person's name Stephanie because it's just the work that I've done because I've built that muscle. Right. So remember someone's name when you get into a conversation with them. Um, the third thing that you can do when it comes to becoming a super connector and building deep connection with anybody that you desire is understanding this one principle that if you grab this principle and you understand it, it'll be one of the most life changing things for you ever. This is what took me from being the shy, quiet kid to being an extraordinary communicator. This is one of the things that took me in that first initial step. And it was that this, this is the third piece, is that the best communicator is not the best talker. The best communicator is not the best talker. When I first heard this, I, I was like, this literally makes zero sense to me. What do you mean the best communicator would be the best talker? That's how it goes. But what you want to understand is that's not at all true. The best communicator is not the best talker. The best communicator is the best listener and the best asker of good questions. So we went back to this earlier, right? People's favorite thing in the world is themselves, and people's favorite word in the world is their name. So if you wanna be an incredible communicator, you wanna create deep connection with anybody you desire, ultimately what you need to do is not be the best communicator, not be the best talker, you need to be the best question asker. You need to get this person to talk about themselves. Right? People's favorite thing to talk about in the world is themselves. So if you can get into a conversation with someone, you remember their name, you make eye contact, you smile, and you start asking questions and get them to talk about themselves, all of a sudden they're going to go, man, I don't know what it is about this person, but I freaking love them. And the reason they think in that way is because all you did is for 5, 10, 20 minutes, an hour, however long you talked, is you let them talk about their favorite thing in the world, which was themselves. Right, So understand the best communicator is not the best talker. And really what's interesting is they actually did a study on this. And in the study, what they did is they took one person and they put them in a plane and they shipped them. Well, they didn't ship them, but they had them fly from California to New York, right, all the way across the country. And this person had one job and one job only. It was for the entire, I think it was a six-hour flight. All they wanted this person to do is simply get the person next to them to talk about themselves. That's it. And the, the secret and the part of this experiment was they didn't want that person to talk about themselves at all. That was the challenge. Only get the other person to talk about themselves and don't, don't mention anything about yourself. Don't talk about yourself at all. None. And so what they did is after doing this a few times, they got it to the point where this person finally didn't talk about themselves the whole time. And so the plane landed. And as people started to exit the plane, what they did is they had an interviewer and they went over to the person sitting next to their person in the plane. And they said, Hey, you know, we're doing this quick survey. We'll give you 20 bucks. If you answer, you know, seven questions, it'll take just three minutes. Person said, okay, answer the question. And what they began to notice is as this person was answering these questions, they were all questions about the person sitting next to them in the plane. And their answers continued to be around how amazing the person was sitting next to them. They started to, to boast about this person, say how amazing they were, how kind, how caring, how compassionate they were. And as they got to about the sixth and seventh question, the questions then began to start asking this person, okay, where was this person from? And the person started to realize, I actually don't know what, where this person's from. They began to ask them, what does this person do for work? And they began to realize that this person that was on the plane that was being asked to talk about themselves never actually asked about the other person. All they did was the entire flight talk about themselves and that's why they were so in love with this person that was sitting next to them. So how was this person one of the best communicators and one of the best connectors? Is literally on that entire six hour plane ride, they didn't talk about themselves once. 
So don't talk about yourself. Get the other person to talk about themselves and they will fall in love with you and you'll create a deep connection with them. All right, so that's number three. The best communicator is not the best talker. Now, the fourth piece to becoming a super connector and creating deep connection with anyone you desire is a four-letter acronym that will change your life. And for me, this may quite possibly be one of the most life-changing things I ever learned. It is a four-letter acronym, which is a foundational building block for communication. And here is the acronym. You can make a mental note or write it down in your notes. It is F-O-R-M. Form, F-O-R-M. F stands for family slash from. O stands for occupation. R stands for recreation. And M stands for motivation. So what it is, is when you get into a conversation with someone, you start to use this as a way to create conversation. So you get into a conversation, you say, oh, where are you from? And you start to talk about that. What did you like about where you're from? What do you hate about where you're from? Have you always uh, lived where you live now, right? And, and start digging into the F part, right? Maybe have them start talking about their family. Then go to O, occupation. You ask them, what do they do for work? How did they get into that line of work? What's their favorite thing about that, right? And start to get them to talk about this. Again, you may not be doing all the talking, but you're getting them to talk about themselves. Then R goes to recreation. Right, asking them what do they do for fun? What do they do in their spare time? What are the activities they like to do? And then finally, M is motivation. What are some of their dreams, goals, aspirations, the things they ultimately want to achieve in their life? And all you're going to do is go through that building block of communication. And that is how you create a deep communication with someone. And then there's one other piece to turning that communication into a connection. And so, again, to, to lay out a few of the first ones, right? Smile. Remember somebody's name, make eye contact with them. You don't need to be the best communicator. The way you can get people to talk about themselves is this fourth piece using form, family, occupation, recreation, motivation. And then finally, the fifth and final piece, which is how you get deeply, deeply connected with somebody. This is the secret sauce. This is the one that if you use this piece, it will change your life professionally. You go into an interview, you use this. You go into a business opportunity, you use this. You go into a conversation with a cute guy, cute girl you want to take on a date and use this. You go to a random stranger in a coffee shop and use this. If you do this fifth final piece, your life will radically change. And what the fifth and final piece is, is finding a common ground of interest. Finding a common ground of interest with the person you are in communication with. So again, remember, our favorite thing in the world is ourselves. So therefore, if our favorite thing is ourselves, then we also like people like ourselves. So what you'll do is use form to find this common ground of interest, right? So let's say, for example, you're in an interview and someone's asking you all these interview questions. Eventually, maybe family comes up or occupation comes up in the interview or you know what you do for fun comes up in, in the interview, right? Maybe you start to prong at these people, proud of these people. Oh, what do you do for fun? And maybe they start to go, oh, you know what? I love, um, maybe an example for me would be, they go, oh, I love the mountains. I love skiing. All of a sudden I'd go, man, I love skiing. And it's like, boom, we are deeper connected because we have that common ground of interest, right? So yes, you got to be a little creative with it. Yeah, you got to find ways, especially if it's in like an interview or a business setting. But what you want to do is find ways to find some sort of a common ground, right? I'll give you a quick example. Maybe you've had one of those experiences where you're in a different country, you're in a different state, and all of a sudden you bump into somebody and randomly you find out that this person is from the same exact town that you grew up in. And all of a sudden, even if you're in a different state, a different country, you're like, oh my God, you're from the same, you're from the same little town as me. Like, oh my God, your walls come down. You feel deeply connected with them. You feel like you're their best friend. You've known them forever. You can tell them your deepest, darkest secrets. And why is that? It's because you found a common ground of interest. So what you can do is two different ways you can do this. One, you find a common ground of interest with words, right? So find ways to find a common ground of interest through form, family, occupation, recreation, motivation. Find some way to connect with them on that, right? That'll create a deep, deep, deep bond. And the second way to do it is to do it not through words, but through the other parts of communication, right? Studies have shown over and over and over again that when you communicate with someone, 7% of communication is actually coming from the words. Only 7%. Then 35% is coming from tonality. So the way you speak, the inflections that you use in your voice, 
And then 55% of communication comes from your body language. So the other way to find a common ground of interest with someone is when you're in a conversation with them, match their tonality. So if someone talks really soft-spoken like this, then talk back to them really soft-spoken like this. If someone talks really loud, then talk really loud back to them. Because what it's going to do is they're going to go, man, this person talks really quiet like me. You know what? I like that. They're like me. I like them. And boom, you create a deeper connection, right? They're not going to look at you and go, are they, are they you know, copying the, the, the tonality in which I speak? People aren't going to do that, right? Copy their tonality and you'll notice you'll create a deeper connection. If you're in person or even if you're on like a Zoom or something like that, match and mirror and copy their body language, right? So if you're having a conversation with someone and they stand with their arms crossed, eventually at some point, cross your arms. If they put their hands in their pockets, eventually at some point, put your hand in your pocket. And again, what's going to happen unconsciously is they're going, man, this person's like me and I like me. So therefore I like them and I want to be deeply connected with that person. All right. So we could spend a lot of time in those last two, uh, but that's at least a high level overview of how you can create that deep connection. Find a common ground of interest. If there's one piece you take from this episode, it is Work on finding common grounds of interest with the next person that you have a conversation with. So whether that's something for a career, whether that's something for a business, whether that's something for a relationship, the next person you engage with, ask yourself, how can I find some way to relate, to find a common ground of interest with them? And when you do that, you will build a deeper bond. All right. So again, to just give a quick recap, the five ways, the five things you can do to become a super connector and create a deep connection with anyone you desire is number one, make eye contact and smile. All right, number two, remember their name. Number three, understand that the best communicator is not the best talker. Number four, use form, F-O-R-M. And then number five, find a common ground of interest with that person. You go do these things and watch how your ability to connect and deeply communicate and connect with others is going to radically, radically shift. And when you do that, you can open loads of doors in your life and you can create deeper connections and more fulfillment and more enriching experiences in life and every moment of your life. All right. Thank you, my friend, for joining us on this episode. Thank you, as always, for joining me on this podcast. It is an absolute privilege and an honor to have a conversation with you throughout your busy life. So thank you from the bottom of my heart to yours. And if you want to help us with that 200 by 30 challenge, go leave a review for us in the iTunes store and maybe you'll get picked next week for me to read your review out loud. Again, just go to the iTunes store, leave a review, let us know what you like, what you want more of, any nuggets that you're getting from this show so that we can celebrate and appreciate you on this show out loud. Thank you so much for being here. If you wanna stick around, don't feel like you need to go anywhere. I have another episode coming up right after this. And other than that, my friend, have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. I will talk to you soon.